Some debate has been had over whether Halo is an arena shooter or not. While I think it's much more similar to this older genre of game than something like Call of Duty, anyone who's played Quake or Doom will tell you, fuck no, Halo isn't an arena shooter. Fuck no, Halo isn't an arena shooter. Y'all, hope we're having a great day today. And yes, I am back to regularly making videos. Somewhat. And today's video, I'm gonna have to do something that does kinda pain me a little, and take part in everyone dogpiling on Actman, handing him the massive L that his most recent video, The Rise and Fall of Arena Shooters, has earned him. Handing him the massive L that his most recent video, The Rise and Fall of Arena Shooters, has earned him. Handing him the massive L that his most recent video, The Rise and Fall of Arena Shooters, has earned him. A retard alert! RETARD ALERT CLASS! Arena shooters haven't been relevant in years. They are now a small, obscure community with a small player base. Even the peak player count pales in comparison to not just Call of Duty or Battlefield, but the arcade shooter. The evolution of arena-based shooters. You see, the evolution of arena shooters started with arena and turned into the arcade shooter that we know today as Call of Duty. It's not just Call of Duty, however, but shooters in general have evolved in general since then. We have shooters with something called open-ended level design, meaning the shit is open-ended. It's a large, fleshed-out motherfucking environment full to the brim with action, content, and fleshed-out level design. It's huge and interactive, kinda like a sandbox. This goes beyond any arena shooter, so it's got huge competition these days. Not that it's bad that people love that shit, nope. But to pretend that shit is relevant the way that arcade shooters or Call of Duty is, is fucking wrong. And time and time again, you will hear near and even Psychonautic go on and on about how they're still relevant. No, they aren't. Not anymore. No disrespect, as I actually have respect for Psychonautic as I learn new skills in video editing only because of him. I do respect him, but he is wrong. And so is Nier. Wrong. He is wrong. And so is Nier. Wrong about arena shooters. How are you gonna get on the Ackman? When you only disagree with him because, oh, arena shooters aren't in the mainstream anymore. That's all he was saying, and you tripped over that? These are the fucking facts. This is the fucking truth. Why walk the line of denial? Fuck no, Halo isn't an arena shooter. Fuck no, Halo isn't an arena shooter. Fuck no, Halo isn't an arena shooter. It's not. Really, it's really a sandbox shooter. A large interactive sandbox with weapons and vehicles, not an arena shooter. But guess what? What do you think this dude, this dingaling, did? Near 2.0, when he stated, oh, Halo is an arena based shooter. No, you dingaling, it's a large interactive sandbox. What are you talking about? That is factually incorrect. Handing him the massive L that his most recent video, The Rise and Fall of Arena Shooters, has earned him. Massive L that his most recent video, The Rise and Fall of Arena Shooters, has earned him. Arena Shooters has earned him. His most recent massive L. Get the fuck out of here. His video was accurate and clear. He didn't even say anything egregious, so I wouldn't call that an L. It's not inconsistent, it's true. Arena Shooters, the, these amazing games, like Doom, or Dark Force Rises is now a thing of history. Now shooters have evolved since then. We even get games like Bioshock or Dishonored, Half-Life 2, and multiplayer shooters have either become arcade-based shooters or battle royales. Not to mention at one point, we even had team-based shooters. Now they're trying to do extraction shooters. None of these new aspects they're adding to shooters these days has a lick to do with arena-based shooters, but that's how Psychonautic will paint this as. The entire video pretending, oh, arena shooters are still in the mainstream, it's still relevant. Unfortunately, it is not, and it's not out of reasonability to see this. Because there's evidence of this, look at what is in the mainstream. It's arcade and battle royales right now. Now, we still have a few hero-based or team-based shooters, like Overwatch or Team Fortress 2. We are far, and I do mean far, from arena-based shooters. That was years ago, dude. These are the facts. 
Now, not only is it a very inconsistent and misinformed recount of the history of boomer slash arena shooters, but Ackman just ends up coming off as completely ignorant and perpetuating one of the issues he describes throughout the video. I honestly think it can be classified as a case of the Dunning-Kruger effect. What is the definition of the Dunning-Kruger effect? You might know about arena shooters, but you're being dissonant yourself towards anyone who says they aren't relevant anymore which they aren't because that was years ago, dude. And if you, your damn self, show a dissonance towards them, then who are you to talk? Oh, retard alert! Retard alert, class! Use your brain, genius. Use your brain. You can't sit up in here and act like arena shooters are mainstream. You know damn well that's not true. Because as you will see throughout his video, there are times where he flat out fucked up his facts and research, which can be easily disproved by a quick Google search. And this extends beyond just his video and onto Twitter, where many others have been rightfully criticizing Actman, while he's been constantly deflecting, coping, or calling people's criticisms nitpicks. Hmm, yeah, not a good look, Actman. Oh, and the last thing I want to add before really delving into his actual video is that I'll be cutting down or speeding up Ackman's video to get to just the very core points that I wish to respond to. Seeing as Ackman's video is just over 30 minutes long, I definitely don't want to be here for over an hour plus responding to every little thing he says, so I'll be cutting it down and only responding to the core points and arguments of his to save on time. So if portions of his video feel a little disjointed, that's why. But with all of that said and out of the way, why don't we just dive right into this mess, shall we? Wolfenstein 3D is credited as being the first FPS title anybody really cared about. Wolfenstein 3D is credited with being the first ever 3D shooter. Hell yeah it is. Yes it is. This is true. There's times where the Ackman says some true statements in this video. I might not always agree with him, but what he's saying about old school shooters are facts. These are things you could research yourself every day. The first avatar, if you will. But id Software didn't invent the concept. If you think about it, first person shooters were merely an evolution of arcade and space shooters. Just a change in perspective. And battle royales are merely the evolution of arena shooters. You forgot about the arcade shooter. The arcade shooter is what Call of Duty is, a casual arcade shooter. See, I don't always agree with the Ackman, or he'll be missing some information, but this particular video, yes dude, you're getting on him just because of him telling the history of arena shooters, knowing they aren't mainstream anymore, knowing they haven't been relevant in years. If you know that, then you can see Steam numbers of player counts and online player counts on consoles. You can see that, guess what, most of what people play today has nothing to do with the arena based shooters and they don't even have relevance as mainstream shooters or Call of Duty. Hell, even single player shooters like Metro Exodus garnered more attention than most of arena based shooters in general. Now extraction BRs are the hot thing. I don't have much to comment on about this now, however I do want everyone to remember what he said here because it will become somewhat relevant to some points later on. About a week ago I told a buddy of mine I was working on a video about the rise and fall of arena shooters and he looked at me and he was like, I don't even know what those are. And I guess that's the point. That's how far out of relevance they've fallen. So one of your first big examples of this genre falling out of relevancy is pointing to your friend offhandedly showing his own ignorance on the matter. Arena shooters, I don't even know what those are. There are people who don't even understand the terminology. It is that out of the game these days. You barely have any, unless it's Doom 2016 or Doom Eternal, and some small obscure ones like Ultra Kill or other indie games. And yes, Ultra Kill is good, damn good, hell, even great. It might be one of the most innovative shooters of our time, but it's not mainstream. It's not really in the public eye like that. It is obscure, and that's fine, some things just are. Arena shooters are no longer relevant in the modern era. Your friend showing ignorance in the matter. Okay, so you need to provide more than just claiming he's ignorant. That's foolish when what he's saying about arena shooters is actually true. There are people who don't even know the terminology. How is that bullshit when his friend's ignorance of it proves a point that people don't even know about it? Then they don't know because it's not relevant anymore. Not like it used to be. Well, just not as relevant as the mainstream. It's not in the mainstream anymore. That's a fact. I mean, what a great way to start off this video, man. A completely anecdotal example that only corroborates both his and your ignorance on the topic. It's really baffling to me as well that they wouldn't know what an arena shooter even is. Like, honestly, that's all on them and not the genre quote-unquote dying. And not the genre quote-unquote dying. 
Dude, I gotta be real with you. The shit, it might not be dead, but the shit is super low in player count and popularity. It's fallen so far down into almost lack of relevance. People don't even put up arena shooters like that. Hell, there's more playing Destiny 2, that awful game that took away content people like me fucking paid for. Yet people are playing that garbage over arena shooters all day. Gee, I wonder why. Congratulations, you're stupid in three languages. Could it be that arena shooters are not relevant the same way mainstream shooters are? Yes, it sucks that Call of Duty, the lowest common denominator of gaming innovation, topples arena shooters. But this is the world we live in, with greed at every game company's corner. So because of things like that, arena shooters don't do sales numbers like Call of Duty. People want to play arcade shooters. Arena shooters is now a small minority in comparison to what it once was. Some of the most revered games of all time are arena shooters. But lately it seems nobody really cares. The Ackman stated, lately it seems no one really cares. Yes, this is unfortunately true. You don't see people giving a left nut but about, about this shit, man, and it's true. I'm not really an arena shooter guy. I like open-ended shooters like Bioshock or Crisis. I'm not attached to arena shooters like that. They had their time, now we have evolved since then. At least not about their multiplayer. Single player, yeah, Doom Eternal's kicked ass. A lot of really revered games were and still are arena shooters. A lot of revered games like what? Name them please. These days, Far Cry 6, that's not an arena shooter. Halo Infinite, that's definitely not an arena shooter. Battlefield 2042, mm, still not an arena shooter. Here, are you talking about indie games like Ultra Kill or some of those other ones? Mm, that's not mainstream, but it does have a cold following. Why can't you accept the fact that they aren't relevant anymore? It's like you can't even fathom a world where that's true. We live in one where it is. Arena shooters are not in the mainstream anymore. We live in a world where gaming, and especially first-person shooters, have evolved since then. That's why it's not that's why it's no skin off my bones seeing this, because oh, I'm not a huge arena shooter guy. I'm more of an action game or arcade shooter guy. However, this still stands. It's not in the mainstream anymore. Shooters have evolved since then. And that even goes for some of the examples you use. But your definition of arena shooters and what you consider a success becomes very muddled as we get further into this video. We saw just now that he credited Doom single player as being successful while saying people don't care much for their multiplayer anymore. And I want you all to remember that as well for consistency's sake. Why does an 11 year old game like CSGO continue to dominate Steam charts while a game fresh off the press like Quake Champions can barely scratch four digits? While a game fresh off the press like Quake Champions can barely scratch four digits. Barely scratch four digits. Can barely scratch four digits. See, that's important because they do chart the player numbers. Dude, that matters. That proves that what you're saying is not true. Quake Champions, a nearly six-year-old game, is what you consider, quote, fresh off the press. Quake, a nearly six-year-old game is what you consider fresh off the press. Don't give me that bullshit, because arena shooters fresh off the press, like Doom Eternal and Doom 2016 multiplayer, don't chart numbers either, so it still stands. And these are the best examples you can provide for your argument. These are the best examples you could provide for your argument? Um, I don't remember you giving up any examples, and you're the one making the bar claim here. So that's kind of your job. Congratulations, you're stupid in three languages. I mean, given how loose your definition of an arena shooter is, and whether or not you want to count multiplayer despite that being the backbone of your entire argument, I'm gonna have to call this out as you just cherry picking specific examples to try and prove your point here. You might have played Doom 2016's multiplayer and thought, well, that felt antiquated. I, I feel like a 40 year old man still clinging to his childhood playing this. Okay, at this point, it feels like you're just trying to downplay any modern arena shooters just to help push your own narrative. Trying to downplay any modern arena shooter just to push up your own narrative. No one has to downplay it because the multiplayer wasn't that popular, just check the player charts. Most people like the multiplayer of Doom 2016. Not true, there were plenty of people complaining about its multiplayer, but they didn't complain about Doom 1 and 2's multiplayer, so that's not entirely accurate. I mean, given how loose your definition of an arena shooter is, given how loosely you play with the definition of arena, um, no he didn't, he actually cited stuff that was actually true about arena shooters. Nier 2.0 is the one who has a loose definition of what an arena based shooter is. He claimed Halo was an arena shooter. Wrong. That's a sandbox shooter. Where did he get that from? Could it be that? 
Could it be just to put up the argument that those shooters are still relevant? He added that to Halo to put up his own argument, but anyone who's played Halo knows there's more to it, more to its gameplay loop than an arena-based shooter. It's not. It's a sandbox shooter. There's a difference. Like, I'm sorry, Actman, but this is some incredibly petty and disingenuous shit. Liking that game's multiplayer was also entirely subjective, and from what I can tell, most people actually liked it at the time. But to top it all off, I really have to ask, what the fuck was antiquated by Doom 2016 multiplayer? Other than a joke about being old, you never really explain that point. Though developers have tried to revitalize the arena shooter genre, it seems none have really been successful. It seems no one has been able to revitalize the arena shooter. Yes, that is also true. Game devs haven't been all that successful revitalizing the arena shooter genre. That's because arena shooters are not mainstream and not as relevant as AAA shooters and arcade shooters. That's the reason these things have become more popular. And since Lawbreakers, it appears no one has dared try. But why? Again, given how loosely you play with the definition of arena and boomer shooters, and the fact that there's already existing discourse surrounding the definition of arena shooters, I'm gonna have to call you out here, because you earlier credited games like Doom 2016 and Eternal for the renowned success in the genre, and regardless of if you liked their multiplayer's act man, they weren't complete failures there either, and like I said earlier, most people liked Doom 2016, from what I can tell. But to say that no one else has tried since Lawbreakers is not only retarded, but but it also just goes to show me how you're both completely ignoring the indie scene and cherry-picking examples to fit your narrative. Actman, come on man, you're way better than this. So, in the early 90s, the entire FPS genre was pretty new, and it was separated into two categories. There was Doom and Doom clones, and you had to pick between one of those. A statement I already don't agree with that the Actman states is Doom clones. Dark Force Rises is not a Doom clone. The game was damn good, and it was an old school shooter from back in the day. It would later evolve into Jedi Outcast, truly even more so. Not like arena shooters. Clones and knockoffs, yeah, we've seen that shit over and over. Each successful genre they make out there, they will copy it till it's dry. For instance, the Souls combat system, Call of Duty being a leading arcade shooter, and many copying them. Or the free flow combat system from Rocksteady they got from the Spider-Man games. People copy this too, even Assassin's Creed at one point. Yep, clones of a genre is inevitable. What gave these games staying power was the multiplayer. That's true, and the multiplayer of Doom was unique, it was incredible, it was revolutionary for its time. Back when, arena shooters were still relevant. Fun fact, at one point the term first person shooter was less commonly used on internet forums than the term Doom clone. Yeah, and you actually said it yourself on why that is, because the genre was still in its early days of inception and innovation. The first person shooter genre was still being figured out at the time. That's why anything inspired by or that tried copying Doom's style of gameplay at the time was labeled as a clone, because of its overwhelming success and effects on defining the genre. The same kind of thing happened happens nowadays, I mean, just look at Battle Royales and how often we joke about them being a Fortnite clone or knockoff, which, sure, is also a bit of a joke, but it's especially ironic considering it wasn't even the first Battle Royale. It's just due to its overwhelming success and the effects it had on its own genre that we joke about Fortnite clones, even though the Battle Royale genre is well established and defined now. So this isn't some old forgotten concept to hear Actman and hype up Bungie's future impacts on shooters after Marathon, but you really fucking glossed over it in regards to the history of first-person shooter games. You brushing it off as just a competent Doom clone that wasn't a household name comes off as completely disingenuous, like you either didn't do any research on the game whatsoever, or are intentionally overlooking its significance. I mean, Marathon was even the first shooter to have aiming up and down, with mouse controls anyway, and also where Bungie themselves started experimenting with a story narrative in the genre. But sure, whatever, it was just a competent Doom clone, I guess. And then in 1995, George Lucas was sitting there like, you know, before I ruin the next trilogy of Star Wars films, before I let go of the next trilogy, before I let go of the next trilogy of Star Wars films. Ah, here we go with that. Prequel haters in their cliche state. I want to usher in the golden age of Star Wars video games. Bam! Star Wars Dark Forces comes out. The first official FPS game for Star Wars. Though it was called a Doom clone, before this, people had been making fan mods of Doom with levels based on the Death Star. And Star Wars had such a rabid, wide audience that when they heard of a computer game where you could shoot stormtroopers in first person, it drew a whole new crowd to arena shooters. 
But one of the most important changes Dark Forces introduced was this radical new concept to FPS. Looking up and down. <laughs> we all start somewhere, right? I... I don't... I don't think... Did, did you do any research at all? So FPS was starting to evolve, but Dark Forces had no multiplayer, so it didn't directly threaten the other online arena shooters. It wasn't until 1996 that a new king of FPS emerged. The Throne of Doom had its first true threat. Duke Nukem, he shows this much history. You know, you claim that the Ackman misrepresents the history of arena shooters, however, you're wrong. The Ackman shows so many different games and different parts of history of arena shooters. You're just mad because they're not as relevant as they used to be. Mm, don't have time to play with myself. Duke Nukem 3D was the first, like, truly successful Doom clone. Okay, hold up. By what metric do you consider it the first truly successful one? We briefly gloss over shit like Marathon because it didn't become a household name, but because Duke Nukem did, it's the first one worth noting as a true success? Marathon? Are you fucking stupid? Marathon? That obscure-ass fucking game? Dumbass. He was just being honest about how obscure the game was. It didn't garner the same level of attention and acclaim as Halo. Hell, it barely garnered any attention in general. Who do you know is like, Marathon, that's that shit. Yeah, nobody, dude, that's the point. So just stop it, you know you're reaching. Duke Nukem's truly successful one? By what metric? By the sales, you idiot. Do you realize how huge and popular Duke Nukem was and still is? People are still asking for the original Duke Nukem forever, not the botched version from Gearbox. The original version. It's still talked about to this day, back when arena shooters were popular. Duke Nukem was fucking huge. What are you talking about? This feels like cherry picking your examples act, man. And 3D Realm succeeded with this game largely because of its change in style. Instead of this futuristic or sci-fi setting or killing demons, it was set in more modern times where you're fighting like alien pigs and stuff. Wait, what the fuck? Modern times fighting alien pigs and stuff. But that's why they succeeded? I mean, sure, maybe that change in style helped towards the game's appeal, but I, I think it's a stretch to say that it led to the game's success. Like, what kind of a point are you even trying to make with this? Modern times fighting aliens, pigs and stuff. That's why they succeeded. No shit, dumbass. Yeah, that's why they succeeded. Just like Doom. You fight aliens and demons and stuff, so use your brain. Yes, that's why they succeeded. It was fun. I think it's a stretch that it led to the game's success. Are you fucking serious right now? It's a stretch? That a game about killing demons, aliens, and monsters, and that aspect led to its success? What fucking world do you live in, dude? This has been fucking true for years. What the fuck are you talking about? Of course unique ideas like that would lead to a game's success. It's fun because of those things, genius. I think it's a stretch that it led to the game's success. Whoa, dude, this comment is so based. While everyone was splurging over the Duke and his balls of steel, its software was down in the laboratory, cooking up their next hit. Oh, those 2D sprites are so cute. 3D realms? More like 2D bullshit. Fuck you, check out these 3D graphics in Quake. Quake fundamentally changed online first-person shooters in more ways than one. When he talks about Quake, fuck yeah, Quake was so awesome. Don't get the wrong idea. I love Quake and Doom and Wolfenstein, but they aren't popular anymore. These are the facts. For starters, the process of finding and joining matches was much easier and accessible. And second, uh, th this is what arena shooters looked like a year prior to Quake. So the advancements it made were just out of this world. Just like the ability to look up and down, a fully rendered 3D FPS multiplayer title was a massive revolution for the time. Alright, I'll agree that this was a big stepping stone for arena shooters and online first-person shooters as a whole, but after doing a small bit of digging, it technically wasn't the first to implement 3D graphics at the time. In fact, that happened almost a year prior. Now, sure, you can say that Quake had way more mass appeal at the time, so it made the concept of 3D graphics more mainstream, but it definitely wasn't the first, and again, comes off as either poor research or cherry-picking. Quake and 3D graphics hitting it big over that. Don't even. Yes, the revolutionary graphic effects helped Quake succeed. That and its incredible gameplay loop, which was badass, so don't even go there. It's honestly getting hard to tell which. So console FPS titles were never considered a legitimate threat. That is, until a certain secret agent made his debut in the 3D world of gaming.
when he brought up Goldeneye. When he brings up Goldeneye. That's right, that revolutionary game from David Doak. Technically, it's not an arena shooter, it's unique. It was a first person shooter, that's what made it so revolutionary. Are we really going to try and play up Goldeneye like it was an actual threat to arena shooters? I'm not trying to downplay its success as a game at all, but that's all it really was, just a successful shooter on consoles. Are you really gonna play up Goldeneye like it was an actual threat to arena shooters? Are you fucking stupid? It was, dumbass! It was! It was extremely successful and competed with many shooters in general, and arena shooters, and it wasn't... Are you fucking stupid? It was, dumbass. It was. It was extremely successful and competed with many shooters in general, and arena shooters, and it wasn't an arena shooter. It was groundbreaking for its time, so what the fuck are you talking about? How do you not know this? This is common knowledge. I'm not trying to downplay its success as a game at all, but that's all it really was. Just a successful shooter on consoles. It didn't really hurt the arena shooter market whatsoever. A retard alert! RETARD ALERT CLASS! That's all it really was? Just a successful shooter? No, you fucking idiot. It was groundbreaking for its time. It changed everything. Do you live under a rock? This is fucking 007 Goldeneye. The game. A game that changed multiplayer shooters forever. A game that changed first-person shooters forever. So what the fuck do you mean? Oh, it was just a successful shooter. It was more than that. It was a groundbreaking video game that changed the face of first-person shooters forever and it was administered by people like David Doak who went on to make revolutionary games like Battlefront 3 and Hades. If you just let that bias of arena shooters go for one second instead of holding on to it so hard... So now I'm curious as to why he thinks this. But this entire stigma that FPS titles couldn't work on console changed with GoldenEye because Rareware actually stopped for a second and said, Hey, does the player need to go fast? Turns out, no. In fact, who would have thought slowing down movement and forcing players to make methodical decisions in combat could even be more interesting? You know, there might there might be something to that style of gameplay. <laughs> no, no. Goldeneye auto-aim spam shoot go burr. Goldeneye didn't have an online multiplayer, so again, it didn't directly affect the popularity of Quake or other arena shooters. So now you're literally admitting that Goldeneye posed no threat to arena shooters. GoldenEye posted no threat to arena shooters, yes it did. Even though it wasn't online, it still posted more of a threat than fully online games and couch co-op games were, were competing with them. Use your fucking brain, yes it was, dumbass. So what the fuck was with the idea you were trying to push that it did when you started bringing this up? Also, once again, a case of cherry picking when single player and multiplayer matters in these games. And GoldenEye planted a very important seed, one that would eventually sprout and grow to overthrow the arena shooter craze. But before that would happen, id Software saw the success of GoldenEye and was like, oh yeah, Rare, well played, but we can do that too. Yo, Midway, go make Doom 64 for the kitties. No, just no act, man. Both games were in development around the same time and they came out only months apart, nor was either a reaction to the other. This is just, this, this is just sad. It took me two quick Google searches, man. Fucking two. Arena shooters were still growing as a genre, but 1998 was a year of innovation for shooters in general, and several new subgenres started to pop up. Metal Gear Solid emphasized stealth and discouraged combat. Rainbow Six was set in a more modern, realistic setting and brought a tactical, cooperative aspect to shooting games. Okay, I know he brought up subgenres, but how the fuck is something like Metal Gear even considered a shooter, let alone related to arena shooters or the first-person shooter genre? I mean, you even emphasized it discourages combat. Like, how the fuck is this a shooter act, man? Don't get me wrong, I understand bringing up certain games and the subgenre they created when giving us a history lesson, but Metal Gear? Really? What the fuck does it have to do with anything? Metal Gear Solid was a third-person shooter. Metal Gear has everything to do with it. It's a third-person shooter. Shooters like Star Wars Battlefront competed with first-person shooters, or competed with first-person shooters. With Half-Life, Ackman shows Half-Life. Yes, a large interactive sandbox shooter that revolutionized and changed the first-person shooter history. That changed first-person shooter history, and it was single-player. It was competing with multiplayer shooters. As for Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid was a revolutionary third-person shooter, competing in sales with arena shooters as well. So are games like Star Wars Battlefront, more games that compete with arena shooters in terms of sales and success. That's why he bought those games up, aside from Battlefront. 
but that's why he bought up Metal Gear Solid. That's why he bought up Half-Life. Arena shooters had storylines and cutscenes. Well, not necessarily. Yes, games like Doom 1 and 2 had a story, but it wasn't an interactive shooter. He didn't have the same level of environmental storytelling he would see in Half-Life. That's what made it popular. Gamers were starting to experience something different, and they wanted more. And Valve provided more with Half-Life. Now, prior to Half-Life, arena shooters had competent, fun single players. Half-Life evolved in a way that few arena shooters ever would after this point. Many developers underestimated the importance of world building, storytelling, atmosphere, and cutscenes. Okay, sure. I'll meet you in the middle, sort of, here, Activan, and say that Half-Life definitely helped popularize those features in first-person shooter more, but I think you're underselling what games prior to Half-Life had accomplished. Stuff like world-building, storytelling, and atmosphere have all been present in other previous arena shooters, some more than others, but barring cutscenes at the time, a game like Marathon checks the other three boxes of world-building, atmosphere, and has a surprising amount of storytelling for its time, and you completely glossed over for all of it. Half-Life managed to evolve the single-player side of FPS while also putting its own spin on the arena shooter format. As far as I can tell, it did nothing different from the existing arena shooter multiplayer format, so... Huh? You were so wrong, it's not even funny. Now, if you're talking strictly multiplayer, that's wrong. Half-Life had a multiplayer that was unique from any other shooter. Now, if you're talking about the single-player, now you know the single-player had nothing to do with any arena shooter whatsoever. Half-Life is a large interactive sandbox, even in its multiplayer. Arena shooters or small areas are small areas condensed into shooting, and only just shooting is a difference. They aren't the same, so you can't compare the two. If games like Quake and Unreal had emphasized their single player the way Doom did, maybe they'd still be relevant today. That's what I'm saying. But what gave these games staying power was the multiplayer. Ooh, yeah. Yet again, another case of you flipping between when single player or multiplayer is what matters here, Act Man. But a hero shooter wasn't the only new kid on the block the likes of Quake and Doom had to compete with, because just two short months after Team Fortress Classic's release, another mod would take the world of FPS by storm, and it wouldn't let go for another 23 years. With Rainbow Six, tactical shooters were established, but Counter-Strike took the best aspects of Rainbow Six and Half-Life and threw them in a blender. Its popularity was so unprecedented, Counter-Strike was actually surpassing the games it was emulating. Especially impressive since there was no single player to speak of. Just pure, raw, multiplayer FPS goodness. Oh, no single player, you say? And it's held its footing in the market for over 20 years? Then why the fuck did you think Quake and Unreal need a single player to be more successful? I'm not disagreeing with him that a good single player will help hold people's attention, but I honestly just want him to make up his mind and proofread a script when contradicting himself left and right like this. Arena shooters still held their ground, but the earth began to crumble, and in 2001, the fall of arena shooters was firmly set in motion, and it couldn't be stopped. Halo Combat Evolved, this game is not, I repeat, not an arena shooter. This game is a large interactive sandbox shooter. Halo revolutionized first person shooters forever. And it was unique from any other shooter, competing hugely with games. Games like Halo cemented it to shooters for years to come and left arena shooters in the dust, unfortunately. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, this is my forte. I am the resident Halo boomer here after all, and I probably know way too much about the older games and their development, especially since Combat Evolved is still one of my favorite games ever. All right, okay, I get it. I'm gonna calm down and get back to the point. <clears throat> Combat Evolved did not lead to the downfall of arena shooters, considering it literally is one. Halo Combat Evolved didn't lead to the downfall of shooters, considering it literally is one. You're on camera, say something. Last night, and night before, there was three women walking down the street that way. I saw I said, hey, you three women, why are y'all walking down the street that way? 
There's nothing down there. And they flew away. I saw them with some birds. <coughs> was Tarragon, and I'm refuting psychonautic therapy. Thank you for watching.